Welcome back. In this section, we're going to take a look at querying with the two PHP clients for Elasticsearch that we looked at in the last section. In this section, we'll start out by performing some simple queries with the Elasticsearch PHP client. Then we'll move on to making some simple queries with the open source Elastica client. Next, we'll take a look at performing some advanced queries with the Elasticsearch PHP client before finishing up by performing some advanced queries with Elastica. In this video, we're going to take a look at performing simple queries with the Elasticsearch PHP client. In the video, we'll take a look at executing some queries against the sample data we generated in the last section. We'll execute a couple different types of Elasticsearch queries using the Elasticsearch PHP client, and we'll examine the results that we get back from our Elasticsearch server. Let's dig right in and get started. Just like we were in the last section, we're going to be doing most of our work in this section in the web.php routes file in the client controller file that we created in the last section. The first thing I'm going to do here, just like we did before, is create a new function where we're going to write all of our code for this video. I'm going to call this function Elasticsearch Queries. Once I have this function created, I'm going to head over to my routes file, the web.php file, and create a new route to point at this new function I created. I'm going to create a queries route. This route is going to use my client controller and the Elasticsearch Queries function that I just created. Back in my client controller, the first query we're going to run is our query on the name field. We were running this query earlier in the series. I'm going to build a parameters array. Inside of my parameters array, I'm going to use my pets index and my bird type because I'm working with the Elasticsearch PHP client. Then inside of the body in the parameters array is where we're going to build all of the queries that we're going to run using the Elasticsearch PHP client. So I'm going to add the query inside of my body and inside of the query here I'm going to run a match query so we're going to add a match query and the match query is going to be run on the name field I'm going to be searching for any doctors that we have in our index so what I've done here is build the query DSL object using the Elasticsearch query DSL but in an array in PHP inside of my parameters array then we'll pass this to our Elasticsearch PHP client, which will turn it into the JSON required to query our Elasticsearch server and return our results. So let's finish our parameters array here. Once this is all done, we've got a completed parameters array. We can send this off using our Elasticsearch client. I'm going to type $response, create a new response variable equals this. Elasticsearch, search, and pass our params then we'll dump our response to the page. The next query that we're going to execute inside of this function is our query on the about field. We've run this query earlier in the series as well. I've pasted in the parameters array here. You can see we have our match query searching for Alice in the about field inside the body of our parameters array. You'll also notice I added size above the body in our parameters array. This will limit our results to 15 total results that come back from Elasticsearch by using the size parameter. So once I've added this parameters array, I can send this off using the Elasticsearch PHP client. I'll create a new response variable. I'll use my Elasticsearch property. I'll call search and pass this parameters array. It will output this response on the page as well. The last query that we're going to run in this video is a Boolean query. We learned about Boolean queries a little earlier in the series as well, and we talked about the query DSL a little bit. So what I'm going to do is start out with a half-written parameters array for our Boolean query, and we'll build it piece by piece. Just like all of our other parameters arrays, we're going to use the pets index and the bird type. Then we're going to build our query DSL object inside the body of our parameters array. So we start out, we have our query, then we start with bool. In this Boolean query, we're going to use a couple different occurrence types. We're going to mix match, musts, and shoulds, and we're going to filter our query as well. So we'll start off with the must. In this Boolean query, we're going to have a must match on Alice in the about field. That means that in order to match our query, the document must contain the word Alice in the about field. The next thing we're going to add to our query is our should section. We're going to have two queries within our should section. We're going to have two terms queries, the first on the brave bird field, matching true, and the second on the gender field, matching male. These terms queries will wait the results to our query 
They won't affect what matches our query, but they will affect the final scores based on whether or not these two queries match. Finally, we're going to add our filter section. This filter section will affect what returns from our query. We're going to do a range filter on the registered field for greater than or equal to 2015-0101. So any bird that was registered in 2015 or later will match this filter and only those birds will be checked for the rest of our query to see if they match. So we're only going to return birds that match Alice on the about field and that have been registered since the 1st of January 2015 and the scores are going to be affected by whether or not it's a brave bird and whether or not it's a male bird. And that's the full parameters array for our Boolean query. We built the whole query DSL object right there in the body of our parameters array. Got our query object, our bool. Within our bool, we have a must, a should, and a filter object. We're filtering on the range of registered dates greater than or equal to 2015-0101. We must match Alice in the about field, and we should be a brave bird, and it should be a male. Now that that's finished, what we can do is send this. We'll use our Elasticsearch property. We'll call search with that parameters array. And again, we'll output the response on the page. Now we can head over to the browser and look at the results from all three of these queries. Over in the browser, I've browsed to our new route, elasticsearch.app slash elasticsearch slash queries. We can see here we've got three arrays output on the page. These are the results from our three queries. If we expand these, we can see all three queries completed successfully. Our first query, there were a total of three hits, so all three were returned in our hits array. If we expand those, look at the source, we can see we've got Brennan Wolf MD, we've got Miss Nettie Beattie MD, and we've got Professor Charlotte Yunt MD. So three birds matched our query for MD on the name field, so we've got three doctor birds. The next result that we're going to look at is for our second query. We can see that's the second thing output on the page. This is our query on the About field. If we open this here, we can see there were 43 total results. This time we've got 15 in our hits array. That's because we added size to the parameters array for this query and told it to return 15 results. By default, Elasticsearch would only return 10, which we'll see on our next query. So we've got 15 results here out of a total of 43. All of these matched Alice in the About field. We're not going to look through all of them, but we can see the first one matched Alice. And we'll trust that Elasticsearch returned the correct results. You can dig through these if you'd like to learn more about the results. Finally, we'll look at the results of our third query. This was our large Boolean query that we executed. For this query, it must match Alice in the About field, and it must be registered greater than or equal to the 1st of January 2015, and the scores here will be affected by whether or not it's a brave bird and the gender. So we can see here we've got 23 total results, Elasticsearch returns 10 by default, since we didn't include a size in our parameters array for this query. So we've got the first 10 results to our query here. We can see the max score is 1.8429799. That score was given to Orville Watsika. That was a bird from East Giles, District of Columbia. We can scroll through and look at all the first 10 results and see the different scores. We didn't do any query explaining. We didn't run the query explainer, but we did learn about that earlier. So if you're curious about why these different birds got the score that they did, feel free to use the Query Explainer to look at how Elasticsearch did the scoring. What we've got here are the results to our Boolean query that we ran using the Elasticsearch PHP client. So in this video, we ran three simple queries using the Elasticsearch PHP client. We ran our query on the name field that we looked at earlier in the series. We ran a query on the about field that we looked at a little bit before, and we built up a bool query, kind of an amalgamation of some of the queries that we run before in the series using must, should, and filter. We saw the results for all those queries in the browser. We're able to expand them, look at the results that were returned. We learned about using size in our parameters array to return more than the default 10.